Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Minnesota. For 25 years, your home for Minnesota Twins baseball. There is no place like home, especially on a sizzling summer night in late June. Twins fans are on hand, as always, in large numbers to welcome their club back to Target Field for an eight-game homestand starting tonight against the Kansas City Royals. No question, home is where the heart is, but for the Twins, it's also been where most of their wins have come. 19 of their 34 this season, 10 of them last 14 games at Target Field. A trend that Samuel Duno hopes to continue tonight as he takes them on for Minnesota. 2-0 lifetime against the Royals. Royals starter Jeremy Guthrie has also produced some nice numbers against the Twins. A 6-2 record over his last 11 outings against Minnesota. An important four-game series ahead for both the Twins and Royals here at Target Field. Two teams looking for wins. Let's break down the series ahead, and we start with the strong suit for the Kansas City Royals. They're pitching. Jeremy Guthrie, 9-1 and one against the AL Central. 2.13 ERA in a Royals uniform. And boom, he'll face two of the hottest hitters in baseball right now. Well, when you're talking about hot hitters, you got to talk about some of the Twins guys. And, you know, this guy right here, has he ever not been hot? I think they had one short stretch in April where he didn't get a few hits. But you look at all these balls, Tommy. He's able to stay through the middle of the field the other way. And, you know, we just talked about Joe's plan. It's phenomenal. Now, this guy, to me, he's exciting to watch. He brings an energy. He's one of those people that every ball club loves to have. He's been able to drive the ball all over the ballpark. You look at those numbers in June since he's been called back. Phenomenal. Gives Gardy a lot of punch. Twins have returned home for the holiday, 4th of July, that is, and they hope to launch some fireworks tonight in their series opener with KC. Dick Kramer, first fly, let him return next with more on tonight's matchup mashup. It's the Twins and Royals tonight, right here on Fox Sports North.
by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealers today. By Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. And by South Dakota Tourism. South Dakota, your American journey begins here. Beautiful night for baseball, and Samuel Deduno starts his eight-game homestand as he makes his start tonight against the Kansas City Royals. And the Twins will face right-hander Jeremy Guthrie, who's you know, going through a bit of a slump himself for the Royals in game one of a four-game series. Dick and Burt with you for the opening game here at Target Field. It's a beautiful night for baseball. The Twins will be facing right-hander Jeremy Guthrie, who's given him uh, the Twins some trouble over the years, but the Twins have got some guys in the lineup who've done pretty well against the Royals pitching. Yeah, Guthrie making his 10th career start against the Twins. Six and two over his career, and he's pitched very well here at Target Field. But I'll tell you what, there's one guy in the Twins lineup that I don't care who's out on that mound. If you wear a Kansas City uniform, this guy is going to somehow find a way to get ahead. Since 2009, over 57 games, Joe Maurer hitting 415. You don't win three batting titles unless you control at least a dozen ball clubs, and he's been able to do all 12. So. Samuel Deduno going for the Twins, and he's done very well against the Royals. Yeah, Deduno 2 0 this year. So far, Deduno in his last five starts, averaging over six innings an outing. And Deduno, if he can get that ball over the plate, there's a lot of movement. He should be right on. But one guy he has to face is right handed hitter, hitter Billy Butler. Billy Butler, a 3 10 career hitter against the Minnesota Twins. And over the last 14 ball games, hitting almost 500, driving in some runs, and also hitting the long ball. Twins have put together back-to-back -to -back winning homestands. They've got four games with Kansas City, then four games with the New York Yankees. And the Twins are hoping that they will play well in their home sweet home.
Bruins have done well at Target Field as of late, winning 10 of their last 14 games. We've got great weather. The forecast for the eight games played here at Target Field is supposed to get better every day, a little bit cooler every day. Ned Yost and the Royals making their first visit here this year. The Twins have already played two series in Kansas City, and the Royals have won five of the six games between the two teams so far. The Menards batting order for the Royals still offensively challenged. Alex Gordon leading off. Elcides Escobar recently moved up to the number two spot in the batting order. Eric Hosmer, Billy Butler, Salvador Perez, Mike Mustakas, David Lowe, Elliot Johnson, and Gerard Dyson. And Samuel Daduno on the mound this evening for the Minnesota Twins, making his seventh start, his second against the Royals. The only win the Twins had with Daduno on the mound back in Kansas City. He pitched six shutout innings back on June 4th. Hopefully he can repeat that here. 2 0 in his career against the Kansas City Royals, making his third career start. Twins in a situation where if they win this series, if they win three out of the four games, they'll move ahead of Kansas City in the American League Central standings. Gordon, Escobar, and Hosmer to get things started. Outside, ball one. Just a hunch, okay? But I've got a hunch this is going to be a really good homestand for the Twins. I don't know why. Well, the last two have been very good, and I'd like to see them repeat that. You know what's good about the game of baseball? They came off a road trip, one win, four losses in Cleveland and Miami, but you have to have a short memory. And here's a new day for Ron Gardenhire and his ball club. You're back at home where you've had some recent success. You want to take that to the next level. Two and one to Gordon. Gordon let off the ball game yesterday for Kansas City with a home run. His first home run in 160 at bats. And then he won the game with a walk off single in extra innings. So the Royals start this game a game and a half ahead of the Twins. Two and one. Chopped up the line, a foul ball. Yeah, we have talked about the Duno before as you look at this uh, beautiful evening here in Minnesota, but. Temperature at 84. Nice breeze. Kind of feels good. Humidity at 34%. But the Duno's baseball just moves all over the place. Not too often he just throws a straight fastball. That chopper right side. Somebody needs to get to the bag, and it's juggled, and Gordon will reach on an infield hit. Three players went for the ball. Finally, Duduno, after a hesitation, went to the bag. Dozier never did field it cleanly, and Gordon should get an infield hit. Northland four defense for the Twins. Oswaldo Arcia in left field. Josh Willingham, the designated hitter. Lee Thomas in center. Chris Parmalee in right. Luke Florimo, Dozier, and Morno. Duduno and Maurer, the battery mates. Bill Cuzzy behind the plate. Four game series. Everybody in the crew will get a opportunity behind the plate. And for those of you who don't know, the umpires rotate clockwise. Cuzzy tomorrow will be at third base. Here's Elcides Escobar. Another number. And Deduno juggles it, flips, and they get the out at first. So just about the same ball hit off the right handed batter's bat as off the lefty Gordon. Gordon goes to second one away. Yeah to Duno just tried to make the throw to second before he got the ball in his glove. Now he's grimacing and I don't know why. But just right off the end of the bat to Duno grab for it and you can see him already almost turned towards second base. Instead he gets the out at first. Just trying to catch his breath he's had to cover. Uh, the bag first, well, get a ground ball. I said the pitchers are the best athletes out there. Just not the most long winded. <laughs> One down. And here's Eric Hosmer. Dave Prumer, the lead trainer for the Twins, watching Deduno, but it was a definite grimace. Maybe just frustration for not getting the lead runner. Down and in, ball one. Royals playing better baseball. They're 14 and 9 in the month of June. They've been as stymied as the Twins have, getting within uh, 
earshot of the 500 mark and then a couple losses and they fall back. They've almost had the same problem the Twins have with runners in scoring position. They have really struggled. They don't score a lot of runs. They are but their pitching staff very solid. It's just going to say they are tops in the American League in team ERA. George. George Brett. One and one to Hosmer. Dug out by Maurer nicely keeping Gordon at second base two and one. Brett's job is to unlock Hosmer. Moustakas and some of the other. Young Royals hitters that have struggled so far this year. Yeah, Brett's not a video type guy. He's more of a mental guy. He's going to try to pump them up just by extra batting practice, talking to them on the field, realizing that every at bat is an important at bat. Don't give an at bat away. Two and two to Hosmer. Duno hoping to deliver a strikeout pitch. Brett hired as a hitting coach about a month ago, and the results haven't been dramatic. But I don't think anyone expected you just hit a switch and suddenly Hosmer would be hitting 300. Mustakas would be hitting 300. Two and two to Hosmer. Breaking ball. I got a piece of it. I think you'd have to say to Duno's strikeout pitch is the curve, right? Yeah, the curveball or that hard slider. Six strikeouts in his last start, a season high. Two and two to Eric Hosmer. Another chopper. And Morneau goes to the bag, two down, and Gordon moves up a bit. Well, the Duno getting a good workout in. At least he knows where first base is now. <laughs> the Duno in his last outing coming June 4th in Kansas City. Six, six shutout innings. A couple walks, five strikeouts. Wins ended up beating the Royals that day, three to nothing. Duno uh, responsible for the only Twins win against Kansas City this year. Hot muggy night and Duno's had a bit of a workout here in the first inning. Billy Butler the designated hitter. You can see the movement or you can see what the hitters feel because every ball has been beaten into the ground. All three hitters. That the Duno has faced and hit little numbers. Yeah. Basically in the infield. Usually a pitcher wants a batter to hit the top half of the ball. So far the Royals have hit the top fifth. One and oh to Butler. Foul back. One and one. We well, mentioned in the open Billy Butler. With a 14 game hitting streak going to last year against Twins pitching staff. Career 310 hitter against Twins pitching. Butler in his seventh season with the Royals came up in 2007. Two and one. Royals hoping to find somebody and right now their hopes rest with Salvador Perez somebody to protect Butler in at bats and counts like this. Perez is hitting 300 coming back from uh, an injury. Breaking ball over the inside corner a slower breaking ball two and two. See Elvis Andres with a 34 game wow. hitting streak against the Indians. Ellsbury with a long one against the Royals and Butler with a long one against the Twins. We do know trying to get him. Get the Twins off the field in the first. Full count. Unless or until the Royals find a reliable bat to hit behind Butler. Teams will have the option of just pitching him carefully, sending him to first base and getting the next guy. He just missed with that slider on a 2 2 pitch. Let's see if they go back out there again with that slider. Lace to center. 
Thomas is there. So a well hit ball finally off the bat of Butler. It's the third out of the inning. One of the five games, but now two four game series at home. And I hope that the better things are coming for the Twins. Here's the Menard batting order in the homestand open. Cleek Thomas in the leadoff spot. He'll be followed by Joe Maurer. Josh Willingham, the designated hitter. Justin Morneau, Oswaldo Arcia hitting fifth. Trevor Plouffe, Chris Parmalee, Brian Dozier, and Pedro Florimont. So Thomas, Bauer, and Willingham here in the first against Jeremy Guthrie. Yeah, Guthrie making his 16th start, his third against the Twins. He's already beaten the Twins twice this year. Both those starts, of course, in Kansas City back in early April and then back earlier this month. Guthrie over his career, 10th major career start against the Twins, 6 and 2 with a 3.3 ERA. Outside ball one to Thomas. Guthrie coming off the shortest start of his season. That coming against the Chicago White Sox. Outside again, two and oh. Two and a third innings, six earned runs, five hits, three walks, a strikeout, only one, but it was his first strikeout in three starts. That's hard to do. Well, Guthrie's a guy they say is starting to learn how to pitch a little bit. You know, when he first came up with Cleveland and then over in Baltimore, he's kind of a thrower. He doesn't mind not striking out anybody as long as he can get deep into the ball game, and he's one of these starters for the Royals able to do that. But the walk to strikeout ratio then isn't very good. His last three starts, nine walks, just one mm -hmm. strikeout, and it's three and one now to Thomas. And hits the outside corner three and two. We've seen this from Thomas. A lot of full counts. In his opening at bat of the game and throughout the game, he's taken a lot of pitches. And more often than not lately had a full count. A high pop-up to right field. Low coming in. It's the second baseman Johnson with the catch and short right field. Northland for defense for the Kansas City Royals. Pretty athletic out there tonight. Alex Gordon really good and left. A gold glove winner. Gerard Dyson in center. David Lowe in right. Moustakas very good with the glove at third. Hosmer as well at first. Escobar Johnson up the middle. And Perez shuts down the running game behind the plate. There's Gordon who made probably the finest catch we've seen here at Target Field. Robbing uh, Danny Valencia of a home run last year. And you saw Dyson his great speed in center. And Lowe runs awfully well in right. Bauer takes strike one. Well, Dick, you mentioned uh, in that top of the first inning about the Royals, their starting staff and their pitching staff in general, 3.51 combined ERA. That's the best in the American League because of that good defense that they have behind them. 
and him being the pitcher. Got a good fielding shortstop. I'll see these Escobar spectacular at times. We saw Mustakas last year in Kansas City put on a fielding clinic at third base. One and one to Mauer. Guy behind the plate is awfully good defensively. One and two. Paraphrasing Yogi Berra, you've got to have a catcher or you're going to have a lot of wild pitches. <laughs> Joe Mauer, six for 16 lifetime against Guthrie. That makes sense, doesn't it? It does. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> One and two to Mauer. Three hits in the series finale yesterday. The average keeps climbing upward. You know, about six, seven years ago, I had a chance to go and do a function with Yogi Berra. And Yogi doesn't like to just get up and talk. He wants somebody to ask him questions. So right. they asked if I would do that. And my goodness, the Yogiisms. I mean, and it's not like you know he rehearses it. They just come out. All right. That's Yogi. And as silly as they sometimes look when you see him. In in print, they do make a lot of sense. <laughs> he was watching uh, Papillon or whatever it was, and he said, "Well, Steve McQueen uh, was. Uh, he must have made that before he died." <laughs> Which makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely, can't argue with it. One and two, driven foul. Nobody goes to that restaurant anymore because it's too crowded. <laughs> Guthrie's been really good for the Royals to the point where they uh, exchange problem children with the Rockies. Jonathan Sanchez sent to Colorado. Guthrie didn't like it at Coors Field, and then immediately Guthrie started pitching well for the Royals, and they signed him to a three-year extension in the offseason. One and two. Oh my! A frightening smash. Guthrie got a piece of it to Escobar. And Maurer with a rocket that just about hit Guthrie in the head. About decapitated him right there. My goodness, right up the middle. How did Guthrie able to get down? See oh. right there. Wow. Oh. Right past his left ear. And it did appear like he got the thumb of his glove on the ball. Well, if he came into this game a little bit uh, not awake, he's awake now, believe me. Ooh. Two down, Josh Willingham, the batter. Inside, ball one. You know, I've I had that in my career too. What it makes you think as a pitcher, get away from the middle of the plate quick. Because that's exactly where that pitch was, and that's where a hitter or any hitter wants to do is hit that ball right back up the middle. So even though I was kind of kidding, that would kind of wake you up, it does. It makes you concentrate on hitting your spots a little bit better. Bounce to third, one hop. And make him pull the ball. <laughs> Guthrie has a one, two, three first inning.
Standing between the Twins and Royals. Ron Gardenhier has called Samuel Duduno effectively wild in the past, but he said today he's been very pleased with how he has settled in and become more consistent. Now, Gardy tells me it all starts with Duduno calming himself down on the mound before he even throws. He takes his time, and then he can control the strike zone a lot more than he used to. Gardy said he did not have command of his fastball, but now he does. So with his stuff, he thinks Duduno could even go deep into the ball games, maybe even finish a ball game, but for now, of course, Dickenberg, he's just concerned with getting through the second inning. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. You know, I, I don't know if the WBC, if he gives that a lot of credit, but uh, going there and having some success, I know he came out of spring training, or, you know, out of that with a little bit of a groin injury. But I'll tell you what, uh, he is pitching completely different than he did for the Twins last year. To do no pitched with a lot of confidence in March and with a lot of pride the WBC experience shouldn't be discounted because it's obvious that for Dominican players players from Venezuela players from Japan as indifferent as a lot of US players might be about the experience players from those countries take that tournament very oh, seriously yeah. as yeah. you know uh, as we did with the uh, Dutch team. One strike and a foul by Mustafa. Well, I'm just going back to last year when he first came up. I mean, 79 innings pitched for Deduno, 53 walks. So here's a guy that just didn't, you know, wasn't real sure of what he had. And this year, just like a big turnaround. Only 13 walks in 38 innings pitched so far. Breaking and he'll ball. he'll do that once in a while. You know, just kind of release the ball, and uh, we saw it in that game in Milwaukee. Remember, he hit three batters. The Milwaukee Brewers didn't want any part of them. They were uncomfortable at the plate. Figuring if he doesn't know where the ball's going, how are they <laughs> supposed to zone in on it? One and two. Punch to center. Should be playable for Thomas. Two down. We have a phantom cam that we're going to be featuring this weekend. It's super slow motion, and it's fascinating to watch. Here's a Deduno's breaking ball. It's amazing what your arm goes through the muscles you see that but trying to get on top of that ball with your middle finger and your pointer finger to create that rotation and also how the thumb comes into play two down I think this is the right word the pronation of, of your forearm as you release the baseball you see it in a, a super slow-mo like that and it makes you wonder why everybody hasn't had Tommy John surgery. One and one to David Lowe. Well, David Lowe has come up and has done a very good job for Ned Yost out in right field. Kind of put uh, Jeff Francoeur on the bench. Lowe hitting over 300. Got called up in the middle of May. One and two. Lowe getting some playing time at the expense of Jeff Francoeur who's been out in the right field. Uh, Area Kauffman Stadium for the last several years for the Royals. On the outside corner, good inning for Deduno. A one, two, three second. The only base runner on a little squib hit that started the ball game by Alex Gordon.
When you join the Twin Season Ticket family this year, you'll be hitting the sweet spot. Purchase any of the Twin Season Ticket packages and receive 10% off food, beverage, and merchandise bought at Target Field. Season ticket prices are also up to 20% cheaper than single-game purchases. Call 833-TWINS, visit twinsbaseball.com, check out the options, and learn about the benefits of being a season ticket holder. Justin Morneau starts the second for the Twins against Jeremy Guthrie. Strike one. Justin, six hits in 19 at-bats against Guthrie with a couple home runs in his career. One and one. Guthrie made a very positive first impression with the Royals and it carried into this year after he signed the contract extension. 18 starts without a loss for a team that wasn't very good. 10 and 0 in that period of time with an ERA of just over two. Yeah, Guthrie making his 199th major league start. 226 major league appearance. 62 wins, 82 losses. Three and one to Morneau. Rip to right. Low makes the catch. Royals had Morno shifted. He hit it over the head of Johnson, but within range of low, one down. Here's the Phantom Cam look at Justin Morno's swing. See just off the end. See the vibration of the bat, which probably wouldn't have been there had he hit it. And the sweet spot of the bat. We're going to have Ron Coomer up uh, here starting next inning for a few innings, and we'll uh, be able to talk about the impact of the ball on the bat, what it feels like, and what it looks like with our phantom cam. I think any time that you make comp, you know, contact with that ball, you're going to get that little bit of vibration. You just saw where that ball was hit off the end. If that ball's in, maybe about another six inches. That's a ball maybe Justin can drive and, and airborne it maybe into the seats in right field. One strike to Arcia. One and one. Now Guthrie, I, as I mentioned, 199th Major League start. He has only five complete games, one shutout, and that coming earlier this year against the Chicago White Sox. A four hit shutout. Popped up, foul. It'll reach the seats, one and two. You can be a part of the broadcast by voting for the Arby's Value Player of the Game. Just text value a space, the player's last name to 234234. Let us know who you think had the most value in today's game. We'll tell you the winner in the post-game show. If I had time to vote, I would probably vote for Samuel Deduno. But I don't want to tell you how to vote at home. Arcia strikes out two down. Well, good fastball right there after a bunch of slow stuff. Guthrie heating it up with a high fastball picks up his first strikeout. And for Guthrie is 46 strikeout in 96 innings pitch. And he's never really been a big strikeout guy. He'll you know maybe top out at eight or nine in a good ball game. He got that ball by Arcia. Trevor Bluff the batter. Breaking ball hitting the outside corner. Another one. Slower breaking yeah. ball hitting the corner again. A good change up right there. Guthrie straight over the top. 34 years old, number one pick by the Indians back in 2002 out of Stanford University. One and two. Made three opening day starts for the Orioles, and then they traded him to the Rockies. Missing inside two and two. A lot of pitchers today, right handed pitchers, they'll step off to the side to get to that balance point. Guthrie steps straight back with that right foot and then 
turns his body to get to that balance point and just missing outside. Full count. To be the 30th pitch for Guthrie with Parmalee on deck. Step straight back. Get those hips turned right there and then explode. And a soft line drive to Johnson. Another one, two, three inning for Jeremy Guthrie. By Century Link, your link to what's next. By Grand Casino, the best stories start here. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, for the everyday competitor in all of us. Now, Dick, I bet you can dance like that really Very slow. slowly. I see video like that, though, and I just I want to talk real <laughs> slow. Elliot Johnson, the leadoff hitter for Kansas City. Dick Bramer, Burt Blylevin joined here this evening and throughout the series up in the booth by Ron Coomer. Chopped to the right side, a foul ball. And Coom, we were uh, showing with our phantom cam the uh, ball that Justin Morneau hit off the end, and you get a sense how much vibration there is when yeah. you don't see it in regular speed, but you see it in super slow motion like that. The bat really vibrates, doesn't well, it? Well, super slow motion, the bat vibrates. You, you were going to see a lot of things that we really haven't seen from the hitters um, with this camera it's very very interesting Florimone backhands it rifles it's throw just in time to get the speedy Johnson one down yeah that's what he is right there Johnson kind of put in that lineup to create some speed in their uh, in their lineup and Johnson almost beat that out seven in a row set down by Deduno. Uh, Chris gets getting sent down struggling a little bit Johnson but a good strong throw by Florimone. He kind of maybe didn't get a good grip on that ball right at the beginning, but see Johnson's speed. Bang bang play. Speaking of speed, Gerard Dyson, the batter, takes ball one. Dyson just activated off the disabled list about uh, five days ago with a sprained right ankle. This guy can fly. He may be the fastest man in the American League. The Twins have had players like that. Revere's going back to like a guy you played with, Coom Otis Nixon. What they want to do, just hit the ball on the yeah. ground and run. I played with Otis in Cleveland. He could Odeo, fly. Odeo. Yeah. <laughs> he was he was special. But yeah, what you're looking for from a guy like Johnson is just what he did, and that's what they're looking for from Dyson is for him to stay on top of the baseball and drive it in that hole between short and third and let his speed take over. Landed in front of the batter's box, two and two. Yeah, these are the guys that don't want to hit the fly ball for an out. They want to beat it into the ground and utilize their speed, just like Johnson did. But I was watching uh, Dyson take batting practice here prior to the game, and that's what he was doing, just trying to slap it to short and then run. 
back to Deduno. Another assist. Another quick second out, two down. Well, you know, in that sense, if that's the direction the Royals want to go, uh, whether George Brett stays as their hitting uh, coach or not, but the, that would be kind of a turn back the clock uh, effort by them. Yep. The turn of the feet right there, Ron. See the Phantom Cam, you see the front foot trying to stay closed, and then you see his back foot pivot up onto the toe. It's very good mechanics from the waist down for a hitter. It's almost like he's ready in a starting block to take yeah. off. Two down, Gordon the batter. But the Royals, when they were good, and they were really good in the 70s and into the 80s, speed was the principal weapon that they had in their lineup. It wasn't power. Brett could run a little bit. Willie Wilson, Amos Otis. Speaking of a guy that was fast, Willie Wilson. Yeah. Ooh. But they played on the rug in Kansas City, and they slashed the ball into the outfield and get a lot of doubles and triples. Which made up for their lack of home run power. You know, when you talk about speed like that throughout a lineup, it also really changes the game for a ball club defensively. You know, those you're talking about those teams with Willie Wilson, those guys running out there in the outfield, covering those gaps. There's just not a lot of hits out there when guys can run like that. On the outside corner, two and two to Gordon, who has the only Kansas City hit for that matter, the only hit of the game. Hit a little number between the mound and the first base bag. Little confusion between Morno and Dozier and Deduno. Dozier juggled it and Gordon ended up with a hit and ended up at third base. And when you talk about lack of power, that's what the Royals have. They don't have a lot of power. Only 42 home runs, and this is their 76th game. Twins are 14th in the league in home runs, yep. but they've got half again as many as the Royals do. Gordon strikes out. Another one, two, three inning for Deduno. He set down nine men in a row. Our Pepsi fans of the game been waiting for the Twins to come back and play at Target Field. Tonight, the first of eight straight home games, four with the Royals, four with the Yankees. Yeah, twins are 19 and 7, 17 here at home. You can uh, take part in the AT&T Twitter poll. We're asking you which will Joe DiMaggio's 56 game hitting streak ever be broken? <laughs> you can vote via Twitter using the following hashtags. 57 yes, 57 no. Do we get to vote? You got your uh, <laughs> smartphone up. Chris How's Parmalee that, leading off the third, and he takes up an away ball one. Parmalee, Dozier, and Florimon. Guthrie has retired all six hitters see his face so far on 30 pitches in the first two innings. Parmalee to center. 
Dyson back, still back. Makes the catch on the warning track, 400 feet from home plate, one down. Coming up uh, in about a month. Less than that, actually, baseball's greatest stars gather for the biggest event of the summer. The Midsummer Classic returns to New York. Home field advantage for the World Series on the line. The 2013 Major League All Star game live from City Field in New York, July 16th, only on Fox. It'll be here at Target Field next year. And the Twins announced yesterday that a couple of their bright young stars will be heading to New York as part of the Futures game. Byron Buxton and Miguel Sano. Yeah, Buxton getting promoted to single A Fort Myers high single A and Sano now uh, hitting home runs in double A. You got another one today. Yep. Two and zero to Brian Dozier. He's looking for the first base runner against Guthrie hoping to get him into the stretch string some things together. Two and zero. And a strike at the knees. The Twins trying to do with their Triple A team, even the Double A team trying to do to get back to the 500 mark and then above. Rochester Red Wings got off to a slow start. Now they're close to the 500 mark. New Britain kind of in the same situation. The, one of the frustrating things about this road trip: one and four for the Twins on the road trip, and that kind of set them back in their quest to get back to 500. Well, that's one thing that both these clubs would like to do. You know, the Royals three games under 500, Twins six games. Yeah, get back to that 500, and then maybe hopefully take off from there. High breaking ball right there, and Dozier a strikeout victim for Guthrie, his second strikeout. Eight up, eight down for Guthrie. Ron Coomer, the difference between a ground ball and a fly ball. Well, you see the bat going through. You see Johnson on the left on top of the baseball going down. This is a swing on the right. By Parmalee who really goes down through the baseball and we saw that right at contact. And what you want to do like what Parmalee's doing. Is drive your hands down to the ball. Hit the baseball and create that backspin and that's where you get to carry. On the ball and that's why you hit the ball 400 feet to straight away center field hit that ball a long way just. One of the deepest parts of this. Field here, target field. Lazy fly to center. Dyson's there. Perfect first trip through the Twins batting order for Jeremy Guthrie. So far, Twins tickets remain available and affordable. A summer's worth of good times here at the ballpark. Don't miss the fun. Check out the steal of the week and demand based pricing for great deals on single game purchases all season long. Call 833 Twins. Go to twinsbaseball.com slash tickets. 
Alcides Escobar leads off the fourth and takes a breaking pitch. Yeah, both, one. both pitchers are doing it a little bit differently. Guthrie with five fly ball outs and a couple ground ball outs, where Dodunos had five ground ball outs and two fly ball outs. Both, both of them have two strikeouts. Easy play for Morneau and an easy first out for Deduno. And another ground ball out, number six already for Deduno. Well, and you just don't see good, good quality swings off Deduno. He, that swing there, you know, that ball absolutely beating Escobar and just, you know, he just, that's an absolute defensive swing. You just never fall into a pattern as a hitter of trying to understand what Deduno is doing with his fastball. I was going to ask you that, Ron. When you face a guy like this, that you know, there's a fastball. It's one of the better hit balls. Garcia back on the warning track makes the catch out number two. Yeah, nice catch right there. That fastball didn't have much movement right there, but you see, he throws a lot of breaking balls. That fastball always has movement to get create the ground ball outs he's had so far. What do you sit on as a hitter? Well, I right, think right, right, what like Hosmer did right there. Hosmer looked first pitch fastball. Obviously, got the head of the bat out to it. And was looking hard right away to me in watching to do no pitch. Especially this year when he's had some success. He's had more command of his breaking ball than he does the fastball as you see the breaking ball for strike one. Ron Gardenhire said today in discussing to he said to always impressed him as a guy who can throw his breaking ball for a strike. Anytime he wants and what he used to run into trouble with. Was getting ahead with the fastball it would sail all over the place and he'd find himself. In unfavorable counts, but he's done more and more of what he just did to Butler. Get that breaking pitch over for strike one. Question I have to Bert, somebody who pitched for as many years as you did. This to me, his release point in his body motion going towards home changes some with the fastball, but with the curveball, it's like he slows down and he's able to just throw the pitch. Ploof digs it out, sets and fires. Whatever he's one. doing, <laughs> keep doing it. He's retired 12 in a row. Couple of home stands. They've hit the ball better. They've hit the ball over the fence better. But the big thing is they've pitched better. Oh, you can't argue that right there. Look at the runs almost the same, but look at the team ERA. Almost a point and a half better. A run and a half better. Haven't done much offensively here. Haven't done anything offensively against Jeremy Guthrie. You're talking about how Duduno and Guthrie have gone about things differently tonight. That's kind of the way their season has gone. Here's Thomas taking a first pitch strike. No one in the major leagues has allowed more home runs than Jeremy Guthrie. 19. No, Dan Heron has with the uh, with the Nationals. 19. Yeah, I checked it. Yeah, but no one's given up more home runs. Than Jeremy Guthrie with 19. Right. 19 and 19 are the same. Yeah. No one's given up 20. It's 19. 19. It's 19. And Deduno's only given up one all year long. So. Yeah. 
Tonight's cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. Bill Bauer has done very well within the division. Well, Joe Maurer, I mean, it's how you win three batting titles, Ron. You just control your division. You know, 76 games are played within your division, and that's why he hits over 300 every year. Well, he has a great plan at home plate and stays disciplined to the plan. Never really gives in as he takes his first pitch fastball. We've seen him take a lot of pitches down the middle of the plate early in a count. He's not afraid to hit deep into the count, and I really believe he feels better each at bat, the more pitches he sees, the better he feels in the at bat. One strike to Maurer, had a rocket up the middle, and it sailed right past Guthrie's left ear. Guthrie, I think, got the thumb of his glove on it, and it deflected over to Escobar. It was a frightening way to get the second out of the ball game. And I guarantee you, Jeremy Guthrie remembers that, and that's why you saw that pitch inside. If you're going to go in, you better get that baby in. If he's going to hit it, he's going to pull it. <laughs> one and one. Thomas aboard with the Twins' first hit. And Maurer taps it foul, one and two. Guthrie so far today has done a very good job of mixing up his pitches to me. The one thing, he's always had a good fastball in the mid 90s, but his breaking pitch, you know, against the Twins hitters, he's thrown a lot more early in counts and gotten ahead. A lot like the Duno has and his pitch a little backwards to some of the lefties of the twins. Well, I think when you you put a Guthrie and all of a sudden you add a James Shields and maybe a Santana, you know, maybe Wade Davis, other guys around him, you're gonna learn. You know, in Baltimore it was kind of Jeremy Guthrie was kind of the ace of the club. Fly ball center field, Dyson waits, makes the catch, Thomas retreats to first, one away. See this swing by Joe Maurer. This pitch inside and almost in off the plate. They look at how long Joe stays inside this baseball. Hands get brought in, trying to get his hands inside to get the barrel of the bat on the ball. That's just a good pitch by Guthrie and good location on Joe Maurer. You know, if Joe stay, you've seen Joe do that a lot, but just stay on top of that baseball a little more. And drive that ball back through the middle for a base hit. And you look at Joe's eyes too, where they were just like focused right on contact. Thomas warned of Perez before the series. Got back to the bag. This guy loves to throw to the bases. Yeah, shades of Yvonne Rodriguez, uh, Tony Panito Santiago, Tony One of their Pena. old yeah. co-managers. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, I'm, I've always been surprised. Is just a fan of the game. Why catchers don't do that more, particularly in a situation like this, a right handed batter? It's a 90 foot throw for the catcher. It's a low risk throw toward the hole and off the tip of Mustakas's glove. And Willingham gets a base hit to left, first and second, one away. Dick, to your point about throwing behind runners, to me, if a guy hit a leadoff triple in an inning, I'm standing on third base and third base when you're expecting that guy to score. I would set I would call a pick off at third base as much as I could just to try to pick him off. See this ball staying down and not coming up. The infield been watered down just because of the heat. And that ball stayed down on third base. Well, that's a game of inches right there. That ball's over a couple inches. It might be a double play. Yeah. Instead, it's a base hit. There's Perez right there. Pretty good throw on percentage. That's a stolen base attempts. It doesn't account for the pickoffs. First and second. One down. Morno at the plate. Foul. Morno hit one off the end of the bat. Hit a sinking line drive to right. David Lowe made the catch for the first out of the second inning. Well, Ron, go back to my point. Guthrie, you know, you said he's doing a good job of adding and subtracting that, you know, when you're around other guys like James Shields and maybe. Not as much Santana because he's kind of a right. hard thrower, but you learn. And then as you get older, too, you know, he's 34 years old. He's starting to realize that I can't get that 94, 95 mile an hour fast. Slash down the left field line, a base hit. Thomas around third, he'll score. Willingham to third. Morno to second with an RBI double, and the Twins get the first run of the game.
Great piece of hitting by Morneau. He takes this pitch down and away and just slices it to the left field corner. To me, Justin has been pitched down there and down and away a whole bunch this season. Watch his eyes go to contact as it's so important to stay through this baseball and track it with your eyes so you don't come off the ball. To me, it's amazing the vibration that goes through that bat when the contact is made with the baseball. Royals bring the infield in here for Arcia. That's not uh, the very safe thing to do. <laughs> Breaking ball off the plate, ball one. And Yost figuring, look, this is going to be a low scoring game. We're already down one run. We're going to try to make sure we don't trail by more. But if you're Elliot Johnson or Eric Hosmer, might make you swallow your gum. To right center field. Down for a hit. And Arcia will score. Willingham and Morno held up, thinking the ball might be caught. Three straight hits for the Twins, and Arcia drives in his 23rd run of the year. Boy, he hit that ball in a perfect place. You have some speed out there in Low and Dyson, but that high pitch right there just hit in the right spot. And you're right, Dick. Both runners had to hold up. Willingham was tagging up. Morneau had to kind of hang out at second base. Was this ball going to be caught? <laughs> but the hands move yeah. on the bat. The handle of the bat wiggling, and then you understand why so many bats break. Bats break, thumbs break, ham eight bones break. <laughs> to me, the cool thing about that swing, though, is if you take a look at his Watch top the handle hand, of the bat here. See how long his top hand stays underneath? That is just great hitting mechanics where the top hand doesn't come over until way after contact. That's why that ball stayed elevated in the gap for a base hit. Two in. Twins need to get that runner in from third with less than two out. Bloop at the plate. Ball one. This is the area on the road trip that the Twins had trouble with. Runners at first and third. You know, one out, no outs. Get that runner in. The middle of the lineup, the three, four, and five batters have all hit here now. Willingham, Morno, and Arcia. Bloop trying to keep the line moving one of the reasons I just sensed that the team might have a really good home stand and hit well in situations like this I think for the first time in a long time they're hitting with confidence at home they've seen the ball travel and get out of the ballpark here a lot I, the twins hitters have never really had that here's a chopper to the right side who's right got to hurry blue has got to hurry and he hits into a double play. Twins get just the two. Blue fits into a double play.
I'm Jamie Hirsch inside the Minnesota Lottery Winner's Circle with a great big Circle Me Burt sign. I'm with the Smith family. They're here all the way from Huron, South Dakota, and this is the last stop of your vacation. So what else have you guys done? Uh, Valley Fair, Minnesota Zoo, and Mall of America. That sounds like a great vacation. You said you've been to Twins Game before, but this is your first time at Target Field. What do you think? This is awesome. Great. <laughs> Well, thanks for being here tonight. I know the kids are excited. We're going to give you $100 worth of Minnesota Lottery scratch-off tickets for being here. Thank you. And Dick and Bert, they said they're heading back halfway tonight. Their son has a baseball game tomorrow, so they're going to hurry back All to right. that. All right. Very nice. Well, good luck to him. And you are here by circle. Well, the Twins in front here so far, 2 to nothing. Salvador Perez with a 1-1 count. Duduno pitching with the lead for the first time. Two and one. He's retired the last 12 batters. They needed only six pitches to, to retire the Royals in order in the fourth. Driven to left, and Perez has hit a home run to cut the lead in half. Just the second home run hit this year against Deduna, and the first home run hit against him since his first start back in May. That's when Don Kelly hit a two run home run off of the Duno, but this was a fastball. And we talked about the movement, Coom. This had no movement. This was right there. Yeah, this is this is a pitch in the middle of the plate. We'll see the replay. And it's just middle of the plate, thigh high, and that's, you know, pitch he'd like to get back. I have to ask the fan on the second deck for it. Yeah. <laughs> Two to one, and Mike Mustakas the batter. Breaking ball over for a strike. And that home run by Perez, his fourth of the year. And a liner snag by Florimon, and then falls down in the outfield grass. A pretty well hit ball for the first out of the fifth inning. Twins fans, join your favorite players at Hang with the Majors August 1st at Toby Keith's in St. Louis Park. Hang with the Majors, a fun, informal event that benefits the Minnesota Military Family Foundation. Go to twinsbaseball.com slash community or call 612-659-3426 for more info. David Lowe, the batter, called out on strikes his first time up. Action earlier today. The Angels beat the Tigers again for the ninth straight time. 3 1 in 10 innings. The Tigers were swept at home against the Angel team that has struggled against everybody else this year except Detroit. So, for what it's worth, if the Twins can win this game, there are six games behind Detroit. If the Royals were to win the game, even though they would be below 500, they'd be only four and a half out. Outside, three and zero. Oh. Well, if I remember correctly, Dick, last year the Tigers did come back to the pack right around this time of the year. They hit a they hit a big skid. They came back and then they got hot in September and just kind of pushed their way right into the playoffs. Yeah, other than Max Scherzer, all their starters have really struggled. Now I don't know who started today, but he uh, was Fister today. Yeah, I mean not bad. I mean it went extra innings, three one ball game, so he must have pitched well. But you know Verlander really hasn't been uh, sharp yet. And Purcell has been getting hit around a lot. And the bullpen has been a big issue for the Tigers this year. Closer role been a revolving door for the Tigers. Valverde, by the way, cleared waivers. He's been assigned to Toledo, and he's going to tinker with his mechanics, trying to get back to a shadow of what he was for a couple of years with the Tigers. Johnson, the batter. And a first pitch fastball strike one. So you think those fielders for Toledo are happy that they got Bill Verde? Because the ninth inning is going to add about another 15 minutes to their game. <laughs> you wonder whether that might not be something the Tigers would tell him to do. I whether, hope that's, so. whether that's in any way contributing to his ineffectiveness. Hey, if you're going to try to reinvent yourself, let's pick up the pace a little bit. Oh, the bat sailing near the Twins dugout. Watch out, Jamie. Jamie, you all right over there? Notice we don't care about any of the guys. Yeah, luckily, yeah. guys, yeah, I don't was care just about, coming down from yeah. the circle me Burt sign, so I'm <laughs> I'm safely away, but it, I'm just a few rows back from there. Yeah, Bruce is down there. We don't care about Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Poor Bruce. Rob's down there. We don't care. 
long as Jamie's okay. <laughs> Two strikes to Johnson. Could be two. Out, out. I'm not sure that Dozier ever tagged low, but at the very least, he ran out of the baseline, and the inning ends. It's two to one. Twins with a two to one lead. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Go ahead and the accounts. Counts of this game? Scripted? I can't see it. May not be disseminated <laughs> without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Well, we're in a lot of trouble because now <laughs> you guys are sharing well, the road trip, right? I see. I have my glasses on. You yeah. don't have your glasses <laughs> on. <laughs> like, he handed that my hello. <laughs> now, what's the deal on the next road trip? You're going to. He's staying home. Tampa. We know what he's doing. Tampa, Tampa, Tampa for the four game series. You're going yeah. to Toronto now, and New York. Toronto and New this, York. This yeah. isn't one of those deals where they won't let you into the country of Canada. Well, anymore, could be. It? Could be. <laughs> Don't you need a passport? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. That's what I thought. Parmalee. One strike and now a ball one and one. No, go back to Valverde and I want to. Get you guys' opinion. You know, he does take a lot of time between pitches. Isn't it up to the umpire? Doesn't baseball have a rule that there's 12 seconds, I believe, between pitches? Until the umpires make him throw that ball quicker and call it a ball if he's taking too much time, he won't get quick. But all three of us know the umpires. I mean, we've been around this league a long time. The umpires are not going to get involved, I don't think, in that decision. That's got to come from the league and start saying something. But to me, how do you ever get into a rhythm when you when you take that much time in between pitches? Marmalee takes a call, third strike, one down. Get ready, fans, for Fox Sports One, America's new 24-hour sports network. Fox Sports One will be your home for great live sports, all the news and highlights you want, shows and specials that only Fox could bring you. America's new sports network is Fox Sports One, coming August 17th. One down, Brian Dozier, the batter, went down swinging, went after a high breaking pitch for the second out of the third inning. At any rate, the Tigers to this point have proven to be vincible when a lot of people thought they would be invincible. Fly to right field, fairly deep, low chasing it, and catches it out of the palm of his glove. I saw a little snow cone right yeah. there. That's kind of the same play Arcia had in Miami when he was unsure how 
how deep the warning track was and how close he was getting to the wall. Yeah, low going back across and then straight back. Not able to hold on to it. Take a look right here. Ball in his glove. Did it do any movement? Yes. Now that's what we saw. We just saw the ball. No snow cone. Right Two in the down. middle. Florimo on the batter. A nice night for us. Some snow cones. One strike. And now a ball. Would you like to get Florimone going again? The batting average falling down to 225. Oh, look what I found. I tell you what, Guthrie's led a charmed life here tonight. Mauer's liner whistled right past his ear. Florimone hits a rocket right back to his glove. Lucky he's not in the hospital. Frost brewed Coors Light, and they say the key for players who are called up is to slow the game down. That's what we're doing tonight with the Phantom Can. Now that's compressing a baseball. It's amazing. I love the, the close, tight shot of Joe and his eyes tracking the ball to contact. Dyson shows bunt, takes a ball. Dyson, Gordon, and Escobar facing Deduno in the sixth. Deduno has walked one man. He's given up two hits. One of them traveled 90 feet. The other one traveled 490 feet. Yeah, corner of the infield. You want to play in. Take the bunt away from him. And Dyson bunts it hard to Morneau. One away. Sanford Health injury report. Tommy Hansen placed on the 15 day disabled list with a right forearm strain. And every time you see that, you think, oh boy. Let's hope it's nothing more than that. Angels have had enough health issues. And on the subject of health, sad news today regarding the former All Star catcher Darren Dalton, who's been diagnosed with a couple of brain tumors. He's going to have surgery and uh, always admired the way he played. And he's gotten into the media business in Philadelphia, so we wish him and the Phillies uh, the very best as he moves forward. Our prayers are yeah. with them. Old Dutch, he was a leader. He could definitely lead that Philly team when they were so good for so many years. One strike to Gordon. He hit the 90 foot base hit. Start the ball game a little squibber toward Dozier. He didn't field it cleanly and it's kind of a, a confusing play for Deduno, Morno, and Dozier. And Gordon ended up reaching with an infield hit and a couple of other numbers advanced him to third base, but then Butler lined out to center to end the inning. Gordon kind of frustrated with that last swing. He was looking breaking ball and got it and still took a bad swing. Floramone has to charge it. 
fires over to Morno two down. Well, Duduno with a very good outing so far here tonight. Just the long home run by Perez, limiting his walks and perhaps going to be in position to beat the Royals for the second time already this year. Yeah, he came into this ball game 2 and 0. Oh. He actually won his first major league game against the Royals last year in Kansas City. Back on July 22nd. First pitch strike. What's encouraging? I mean, we saw some of this last year from Deduno in the 6th inning. He had some really good games against some really good lineups Texas and Boston, but the pitch count was about 50% higher than it is now. Even in his last start in Cleveland, he pitched six very good innings, only gave up two runs, went out for the seventh, gave up a hit and a walk. Boom, he's out. And you can see he's had a very good pitch count here this afternoon or this evening. The bullpen uh, allowed some inherited runners to score in mm -hmm. that seventh inning, but through the six, three of them were one, two, three innings. And most of the damage done to Deduno in that game. Uh, were added to, the numbers were added to his line after he left the game. Here's a ball poked to center and Escobar keeps the inning alive with a two out single. Well, Escobar going down and hitting a pretty good pitch right there. Not much you can do. Well that's that's Escobar looking and, and most of these Royal hitters now sitting breaking ball and looking for that pitch. That's how you stay on that ball. The only way you hit that pitch down almost in the dirt is you're looking for that. You see how he's tried to do his best to keep his weight back and let that ball get to him, even though Juduno's got great movement on the breaking ball going down. Eric Hosmer, the batter, a warning track fly ball to left field his last time up, a bouncer to Morno his first time up. Over the inside corner, strike one. Hosmer's average climbing up, and it's in a respectable range right now, but the Royals. Are frustrated, uh, excuse me, frustrated with the four home runs. Up the line foul. With the home run hit by Perez, the Twins have now hit 68 home runs and allowed 70. They didn't homer at all in Miami and gave up three home runs. 72 pitches for Deduno, 49 strikes, 23 balls. 10 ground ball outs for Deduno. And that double play last inning, only the third double play turned behind him. And I still wonder why. I mean, you know, he's got that good sinker movement all the time. Only three double plays. This is his seventh start. Well, he's walking about one guy every three innings, and opponents are only hitting 261. Right. So maybe that's part of the reason. He just hasn't given up as many base runs. One and two to Hosmer. Poke to short. Floramone sets and throws low to Morno. He makes the catch to end the inning. It's still two to one.
Try the new premium McGrath at McDonald's today. I'm loving it. And buy Toyota. Let's go places. To find your nearest Toyota dealer and check out our current offers, visit buyatoyota.com. Good outing for Samuel Deduno. Wins in front 2-1. to one. A busy night for basketball as the NBA draft gets underway tonight. Get complete coverage on all the Timberwolves picks and organizational moves from Phil Irvin at FoxSportsNorth.com. Cleet Thomas started the two-run fourth. Got the first Twins hit. A ground ball up the middle for a clean single. And he takes down and away ball one. Twins did string some things together against Guthrie. In fact, in the other innings, he's had one, two, three innings. Thomas wallops it down to the corner, but he hooks it foul. Mentioned that Guthrie had a long run of success for the Royals. 18 starts without a loss. 10 and 0, an ERA at 2.21 during that stretch. But since then, in his eight starts, he's two and five. One and one to Thomas. Foul back one and two. And speaking of the Royals rotation we said yesterday and this is the way the Royals had it set up that when Kyle Gibson pitches here on Saturday as of yesterday he was going to face James Shields but the Royals have moved Shields up to tomorrow and it'll be Wade Davis facing Gibson on Saturday. Ned Yost explaining before the game that the reason they moved Shields up a day is it allows them moving him up a day allows them to get one more start out of Shields before the All Star break. He's their number one guy. Right. And so they decided to tinker with the rotation a little bit here in Minnesota. Thomas off the end of the bat foul. Shields always one of those guys pitch a lot of innings. He, you know, likes being in that number one spot, has always done very well. All right, here's your horse. Yeah. Two and two. In three and two, another full count to Clint Thomas. Well, Guthrie has not walked anybody yet. Those have three strikeouts. This will be pitch number 70. Off the middle, hit the mound, wicked hop, fielded by Escobar, and he throws Thomas out one down. Mauer hitless tonight, but it's been a good week or so for Joe Mauer. Over the last eight ball games, hitting 444. He just really stays with his plan, and to me, over this last road trip, you, you watch him just spraying balls around the field. But to me, the discipline that this guy shows, and I wonder what it'd be like to be able to hit like that. That's what I'd like to know. How many? Hitters, I'll ask you guys if you've seen that are as good with two strikes as Joe Maurer is. Wade Boggs. He's the first mind. guy that comes to mind yeah, for right. me, too. And was not afraid because what Boggs he would do is he would definitely take the first pitch and probably the second pitch. If he went 1 1, he was probably taking the third pitch. And I mean, he was one of those guys, Burden, you remember, and Dick, how he tracked the ball to the catcher's glove and did not mind at all hitting with two strikes. One and one to Mauer. Remember, remember that game in Cleveland. Corey Gluber started. And the second batter first pitch Joe Mauer hit the home run. I mean such an unusual at bat for Joe to hit swing at the first pitch. And then also hit it deep that was rewarded but to swing at the first pitch. Of the ball game. You rarely see him do that. Foul back. Two and two. And there's. His hot zone with two strikes. <laughs> and you throw it down the middle with two strikes, he's going to hit 500. And you're trying to throw the ball down in the zone, and you know, down and away, everybody's 100 <laughs> on the black outside corner. That's what you want to control. It's just hard controlling it on a consistent basis. 
Escobar playing behind the second base bag gets the ground ball. Mauer retired two down. Well, that's two times Joe has hit that ball right back up the middle, and the, the defense for the Royals give him credit. They have Joe to hit it up the middle, and he has. The first one past the ear of Guthrie, and that one right there, inside out swing. A lot of spin on that ball, but good job by Escobar. And you can tell what the plan is to get Joe out. They've pitched him in. He hit the bullet past Guthrie's ear early in the game. Then he hit the ball to center field. That was the fly out. That pitch was in off the plate. And now that pitch jammed him. They swing the defense around on the ground because he's going to end up pulling that ball if he's going to get a hit. Strike one to Willingham. Twins have four hits against Jeremy Guthrie. And they came in a span of five at bats in the fourth inning. Scored a couple of runs. That's why they're leading two to one. Breaking ball, a swing and a miss. Yeah, Willingham hit that past that ball just out of the reach of Mustakas in the left field. And again, you know, you're only talking maybe a ball length of maybe the Twins getting out of that inning with no runs. Instead, that inning continued and they picked up two. Well, back just beneath us. Watch out. Willingham, one of the guys I'm looking forward to this weekend where we got this slow, super slow camera, the phantom camera, of watching him go down to the baseball, drive his hands down, and really create the backspin. I hope he hits a home run this weekend so we can take a look at that. Hey, Ron, you were a power hitter like, like Josh, okay? I'm seeing him hit some long fly balls. I mean, high, deep fly balls. He's just missing, I, I say, a quarter of an inch. From really, you know, hitting the ball out of the ballpark. And a lot of that has to do with either your eyes coming off the ball right at the end and you come off it just enough to where you don't square the ball up. You know, or he's out in front and the, the speed of the pitch has gotten him and he's just a little out in front and his swing starts finishing before uh, he, he makes contact. He's very close. Very close. Yeah. Two he's, and two. He's really fun to watch when he's locked in, though. Oh, he boy. Can hit the ball yeah. a mile. I made the comment. That's what I know about hitting, but to see where nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> yeah. But to see where Willingham's hits have been on the road, he's hitting the ball hard up the middle. It seems like that's, you know, he's just about around the corner. Without question, that's by design too. When I watched him before he went on the road, even in batting practice, hook, 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 everything was from the left fielder to the left field foul pole. And when you guys went on the road, he started spraying the ball. Back through the middle of the field, and that's a good sign. And now, just outside three and two. It's been a good at bat right here for Willingham. Takes like that, or something we didn't see, you know, a month ago. And he is. He's getting closer to being locked in again. 35 home runs last year, drove in 110 runs. And a good at bat. He draws a walk, the first walk for Guthrie. And it gets Morno to the plate with a man aboard and two out. Morno's hit two line drives. He pulled one a little bit off the end of the bat into right field. Lowe made a nice catch. And then in that cluster of hits for the Twins in the fourth inning, four hits and five at bats, it was Morno's double down the left field line that drove in the first game, uh, run of the game. And I think where we see, you know, Guthrie working Mauer inside, they've been working Justin away. And field shift is on for Morno. And time call. And they're going to pitch Justin away, play him away in the outfield because when he elevates the ball, when he play, when they play him, when they pitch him away, he elevates the ball the other way. If he hooks the ball, he's going to hook the ground ball, and that's why the defense is shifted around on the infield. Down and in ball one. Now, if you're a hitter, were you shifted to the pull side at all? No. Not to this degree? Okay. Not even close. I. My gap that I really naturally hit the ball to is right center field. Okay. I had to work at pulling the ball as I became a big league player. And as a player that's up at the plate right now, Justin, do you know where the shift is? I mean, do you do you even look at that, or are you isolate it on the pitcher and the release? I mean, I, when you first walk up there, you go, boy, the you know second baseman's out like you know out in short right field. I would definitely want to know as a hitter because. I felt like if they were going to shift me around to the pull side, I had the bat control with my hands to hit the ball the other way if needed. Into the right field corner and down. 
around for a hit. How far can Willingham go? To third. They're waving him around. Relay from Johnson to the plate. And he is out. Morno with another double. And Willingham, as fast as he could, got home. But it wasn't quite in time. A good relay by the Royals. And it's still 2-1. to one. Like you mentioned, Dick, you know, Gut Guthrie had retired the first nine in a row, but then in the fourth inning, Twins were able to get four hits. Willingham and Thomas base hits, Morneau with an RBI double, followed by Arcia's RBI single. That made it two to nothing. Billy Butler cracks the first pitch of the seventh inning into right field for a single. Only the fourth hit for the Royals. Perez hitting the uh, home run to lead off the fifth inning. For the Royal scoring. So Duduno to the stretch. With the tying run at first, nobody out. Perez hit one into the upper deck, second deck, here at Target Field for the lone Kansas City run, leading, uh, leading off the fifth inning. Pitch over for a strike. We're talking about double plays, and the Duno hasn't gotten many. A situation here where one would be welcome. Perez has hit into six of them in 232 at bats. Breaking ball lifted to left field. Arcia as it landed his feet off the end of the bat. Perez backs up Butler's single with another one, and now Mustakas with the tying run at second, nobody out. That's kind of a hard ball to judge right there because of the way he swung right there, and the ball just kind of drifted into a short left field rather than a line drive to Arcia. Well, he hit one ball into the second deck, as yep. Dick was mentioning, the same exact swing on a breaking ball hits off the end, and as an outfielder, you just try to freeze and not move one way or the other, but because of that, it ends up dropping in. I see Rick Anderson getting on to the on the phone to the bullpen. This is where uh, the Duno was last time out in Cleveland. Six very good innings, and then the first couple runners got on. The bullpen came in, gave up his runs. See if he can get out of this inning. Mustakas, a fly ball to center, and a line drive to Florimo. In the air, poor bunt over the Kansas City dugout. we near it. One strike. Mustakas does not have a sacrifice bunt. I can see, see why. See why. <laughs> well, clearly he's not highly thought of because of uh, the Royals' desire to have him be a bunter. But <laughs> if you're going to hit 214 or whatever it is now, 212, you'd better be able to get the ball down when asked. 
Corner infielders up, and Mustakas this time takes inside, showing no signs of bunting. One and one. Interesting this inning, the first hit by Butler. Even shooting the ball the other way, a breaking ball, and then the second hit by Perez, also a breaking ball, and both swings, good swings. Seeing the Royals really sit on off speed pitches by Deduno. Two and one. You saw Fien and Thielbar warming up in a hurry in the Twins bullpen. Then one thing that's the Twins have been victimized by on the road, they the uh, the worst three innings seem to be the last three or four innings. Usually that's been a strength of this Twins team with an efficient bullpen, stranding runners and pitching effectively. That was not the case on the road trip. Two and one to Mustakis. It's a pitcher you still think ground ball. Get a ground ball. Lifted to right. Retreating is Parmalee. And there's the out. Butler will chug to third. One down. Let's go back to the uh, base or the double by Justin Morneau with Willingham at first base. You see the contact right there, Ron. Solid contact. Solid contact out in front as he drives his hands. As Morneau is kind of has a flat swing. We'll see the play at the plate. What a perfect relay right there. Perez making the tag. Look at how close that is at home plate. Right there he's out. Yeah. Right before the foot got on the bank. Uh, plate. First and third one down. Great shot right there. David Lowe the batter. Ploof. And on the edge of the grass at third. Low runs very well. Tough guy to double up. Duduno did strike him out in the second. And Low started that great relay, and we talk about it, talk about it, and talk about it maybe more when it doesn't happen than when it does, but the importance of hitting the cutoff man. Perfect, perfect throw to the cutoff man, perfect relay to the plate. Great tag by Perez by letting the ball get to him. And then bringing the tag down. The big difference from here is past. You see that leg get dropped down and blocking home plate. Where now catchers give home plate to the guy sliding, catch the ball and do more of a tag like I would at third base, as opposed to blocking home plate like we saw years ago. And that's a big man right there, Perez. I mean, he could have put a hurting on uh, Willingham right there, but I think he knew he had the ball in time to be able to make the sweet tag. If it's going to be a bang bang play, then he may have, you know, dropped that left knee into uh, that dirt. I was talking with Terry Steinbach about that today because there's still some uh, uh, concern about how Jan Gomes handled the the play in Cleveland, stepping on home plate without the ball, and Terry. Said that to, you know, one of the guys who used to do that a lot was uh, Mike Sosha when he yeah. was a catcher. He would he would almost sit on the plate before receiving the ball and dare the runner yeah. to try to you know knock him off the plate. And that's to my point. What you see now is is the catcher's left heel on the plate, but up in front of the plate, not blocking. Play good fastball by Deduno, 92 miles an hour. And I mentioned Ed Ott with the Pittsburgh Pirates, a troll. We call him the troll. Nobody crossed home play without a fight. I mean, that's basically it. It's one, changed. One strike to David Lowe and all, all the conversations Mowers had, Anderson's had, probably on how to strike David Lowe out right here. There's one strike. There's two strikes. A good heart breaking ball there. Strike one. And then the heartbreaking ball. So the doodle ahead in the count. Struck him out looking with a curve on the outside corner back in the second inning. Yeah, you know, you want to go back inside right here with that heartbreaking ball, just like he did on that previous pitch. The slider, right? You want to yell. Anything away, he may slap it the other way. Two strikes to low. Foul tip. Mauer hangs on. Mission accomplished on three pitches. Went back inside again. And that's a huge strikeout for Samuel Duduno. His third strikeout of the ball game. And I really like the pitch selection as you guys are talking about. You saw Butler with the breaking ball base hit. You saw Perez with the baking breaking ball base hit. And then all of a sudden Duduno goes to the hard stuff and blows the hitter away. 
What a great shot. What a great catch by Maurer too because it looked like he tipped that ball but right into the glove. Now Twins need to get Johnson. Breaking ball tapped foul. This is a. Uh, in terms of development, a big moment for Samuel Deduno. The pitch count very reasonable, but he's given up in a tight ball game, a one-run ball game, a pair of hits to start the seventh inning, and the Twins are leaving it up to Deduno wow. to get out of the inning. That's what I was going to say. Let him, you know, win or lose his own ball game right here. It's up to him. See but, how much he has left in that tank. But a big part of that is the pitch count was kept down low to allow him to. You know, approach the seventh inning, hopefully get through it with less than 90 pitches. Yeah, he's not at 110 pitches, right. 112 pitches. He's, he's been in the game and he's been controlled most of this ball game. One and one to the number eight batter. Grounder to short. Florimon will end the inning himself. Great job by Samuel Deduno. A pair of hits to start the inning, but the Royals still trail by a run. Twins still leading two to one. You can get into the broadcast on Fox Sports North and talk baseball. Submit a question online at carsoup.com slash baseball. Tonight's question from Jeff in Richfield. What wondering what's uh, impressed us the most about Oswaldo Arcia this season? Well, this is a young guy that you know is really able to do a lot of things, but to me, when you look at him as a hitter, his aggressiveness at home plate, guardy has gotta love getting a young guy that's up there letting her rip. And the willingness to take chances at the plate. He's looking to hit the ball a long way on a regular basis. And I'm watching him today, as we all do, take batting practice. This is a guy that has the personality of somebody who wants to do damage at home plate. He's launching balls into the upper deck. That's a that's a personality of a hitter. You gotta love these young guys coming to the league and swinging that back. You know, I always saw Ken Griffey Jr. kind of put his head on that right shoulder, and it looks like Arcia does that to keep that right shoulder in so he kind of goes toward wherever that pitch is. Yeah. It's a great point. One and one to Arcia. Oh, I call him a diver. He's a little bit of a diver. That's why some fastballs that are maybe three, four inches inside, he'll back away because he does dive into that plate, and nothing wrong with that, believe me. As a pitcher, you say, okay, you're going to dive. I'm going to go hard in, but then maybe I can get him down and away. Chipped his bat in a roller foul. He'll have to get a new stick. Ron Gardenhire asked about Arcia in the media session today. Said that he's noticed that Arcia is laying off pitches that he swung at in his first stint with the Twins. Now, here you'll see with the cupped bat, the ball actually hit with the very end of the bat, and then that chips the bat, so he needs a new one. 
but that's just a great swing and great head position where he's staying down on the ball and through the baseball as long as possible. If you were a golfer, you would want that swing. That's, right that's outstanding, absolutely. Yeah. One and two to Arcia. Two and two. You but I think, it? Dick, you know, when he first came up, of course you're excited. You want to prove yourself. Right. You have that little extra, you know, adrenaline flowing. Where now maybe he's just a little calmer, and now he's looking for that pitch and he's doing a great job. Well, a couple of pitches here, high fastballs that he, you know, we saw him swing at that a lot and miss or pop up. I think that's the point, Dick. What you're saying right there is, he's taking pitches where he's not getting himself out at home plate. The pitcher has to get him out by making good pitches. Where earlier there are times he was launching balls for a long way, but then also he was an easy out early in early in his at bat because he was just swinging at pitches he couldn't handle. In a nutshell, Ron Gardner said the at bats are better, and we might be seeing an example of it here, leading off the seventh inning. Three quick, and two. Quick hands too. Speed pitch might have been looking fastball, but he was able to waste it and keep the at bat alive. But to me, Dick, the big difference is the approach of that swing. He let that ball get deep. He followed that, but he was underneath it and followed it off. But his approach was towards the bullpen, towards left center field. And that's why he's staying in at bat so much longer as opposed to hitting those routine high fly balls to the outfield. Pop foul again. Running up Guthrie's pitch count. Three two strike fouls for Arcia in this leadoff at bat in the seventh. At the knees. Won't see him take too many call third strikes. And he takes one here to start the seventh inning. Saturday baseball night in America returns. Robinson Cano and the Yankees go to Baltimore to take on Chris Davis. And the Orioles baseball night in America beginning Saturday at six central. Well, you got to credit Guthrie right there because the previous three four pitches were up in his own, and then he paints one straight down about knee high. So Guthrie picking up his fourth strikeout. Plouffe the batter. Ball one. When Plouffe was up, the Twins had a couple runs. Runners on the corners, one out. I was talking about how I, I thought the Twins were ready to have a good homestand offensively, and then blew fit into the double play. There's a liner to left center and a base hit. In terms of hitting with men on base, and Ron, I wanted to ask you about that because the point I was trying to make is for the first time, maybe since the first year here at Target Field, I think the lineup is hitting the ball with confidence in their home ballpark. I would agree with you and we saw that in batting practice as we see Phantom Cam with the breaking ball from Guthrie. How does your arm feel Keep watching that? <laughs> Feels great. I want to After back 20 out there. some years of pitching. <laughs> but I, I would never agree. Never arm did that. Yeah. You don't want to see that. Do I wonder you? I have to brush my teeth left handed. <laughs> <laughs> Once a week. Parmalee the batter. But, no, but you, were, yeah. you were talking Ron, about the, uh, the twins lineup. Well, to your point, you, you watch batting practice and you watch the balls flying around the ballpark, and there's an energy with some of these young hitters that are confident young hitters. Parmalee being one of them who's been swinging the bat very well. Arcia, young hitter who's swinging the bat well and is very aggressive at home plate. And I think that's, that's an energy that this club needs and has right now. And I, I agree with you. There were times last year where you know it was cold and damp in here and the ball wasn't flying and you could see a negative feel around the batting cage with some of the hitters. Parmalee yeah. lifts it foul it's hard enough to hit I would imagine when you're facing the other team's starting pitcher but when you're facing the other guy's pitcher and the ballpark right that has to double the difficult. Well, I'll tell you why I think Clay Thomas has come in and did a good job too. Phenomenal job. Yeah. An aggressive at home plate he's been swingly you know the ball he Hook just followed his last at bat. Those are great swings and aggressive swings. Parmalee's been swinging the bat aggressive. RC, I, I like the young guys. You know Maurer, Morneau, and those guys, Willingham, they're going to swing and be aggressive. But you have to get these young guys feeling good at home plate. And I think that's part of Bruno as a hitting coach having a lot of fun around the batting cage. You, it, there's an energy with Tom Brunanski 
around the batting cage. He likes to hit. He liked hitting and he likes it. Two and one to Parmalee. Foul back two and two. A good swing right there. Just fouling it straight back. Parmalee with a fly to center and he was called out on strikes. The Royals went back to the uh, old book on Chris Parmalee. Bust him inside with a fastball with two strikes and that used to freeze Chris and then he kind of adapted to that. And, uh, handled those pitches better and he got caught taking a fastball over the inside corner in the fifth. Two and two. Perez this time sets up outside. And the pitch is outside. Three and two. A little backdoor breaking ball that missed. Dozier on deck. Twins with six hits and if you just joined us. They bunched four of them together over five at bats to score a couple of runs in the fourth against Guthrie. Runner goes. It's ball four. Bluth goes to second. Parmalee takes the second walk issued by Jeremy Guthrie. And before Dozier bats, we'll tell you about MLB.com at bat, the number one source for live baseball anywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry 10. At bat delivers Twins baseball with live audio pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat. To 31826 or visit twinsbaseball.com for details. Well, we showed you Will Smith, a left hander, warming up. Now, this is, might be his last batter he's going to face, or I'm sure if with Floor mowing on deck, they're going to want him to hit right handed. So, see if Dozier could do some damage right here. A couple runners on with one out. Dozier had a really good at bat last at bat. He hit the ball at a wall in right center field. I'd like to see that same approach. Is it a line drive? Over the second baseman's head. Dug out by Perez. He's awfully good behind the plate. One and one. He is one of those guys behind home plate that has that energy. Pudge Rodriguez, Santiago, as you brought up, Pena, the guys that like to bounce around, they like to throw. Fun to watch a guy enjoying playing his position. One and one to Dozier. Dozier, one of the guys that has hit much better here at home as of late, has hit some home runs here. Twins desperately need right handed batters to hit some home runs in this ballpark. Especially in the absence of Josh Willingham, who's going through a bit of a spell. We'll see if Twins can take uh, advantage of Guthrie right here. He's not as sharp here this inning that he has been earlier in the ball game. He's, he's missing. He's trying to push it rather than let it go now. A little hard breaking ball. Good pitch. Those are looking fastball right there. Two and two. Hey, you're going to see the approach by Dozier on this pitch. Look at him go towards left center field. Out front. And that's where I was talking out. Going into this at bat. If he could get zoned into that right center field gap. He's going to be on these pitches. That's better. Fastball flip foul. Another thing the Twins did not do well on the road trip when they had the lead, adding on some runs in situations like this. Two and two, Dozier. This is foul again. Well, that's kind of the problem that the Royals have had too. So both these clubs, you know, are, are up sub 500 because they have not been doing a good job like they did not do in the seventh inning against the Duna runners at first and third, you know, with the one out. And the doodle just got the strike out and the ground ball out to end the inning. The threat. Two and two. Full count. Floramon on deck. And uh, I think you're going to be proven to be right that this will be the last batter Guthrie faces here with Floramon on deck. Yeah, it looks like he's tiring a little bit right here. Even that breaking ball. It's just not that as it doesn't have a bite. There's a sharpness. Well, the first five innings outstanding in the sixth and seventh. Uh, too many pitches. Full count to Brian Dozier. Pick off to second. Uh, diving back is Bluff. And 
Perez now will go to the mound. I think everybody on the field realizing forgot to miss his last hitter. They're trying to get outs any way possible. Yeah, most pitches he's thrown in a ball game 114. That was two starts ago. He had that short start his last time out. Only two and a third innings. Smith is ready. Full count to Dozier. Runners go. Ball chopped to third. Bobbled by Mustakas. Everyone is safe. Well, the Twins get a big break. Mustakas committing his ninth error of the year at third base. And here comes Ned Yost. You will make the move, but that may have been a double play. Maybe Mustakas saw the runner Ploof coming at him. Thought, okay, I'm going to tag him and throw to first. But instead, you could almost see that's what he was going to do, and then lost sight of the ball. Watch his eyes. See that? Yep. Eyes off the ball. Yep. He was going to tag. Try to. He was going to tag Ploof, which he did, but without the ball. That that's with a chance to break it open in the seventh. on in the bottom of the seventh inning Pedro Florimon will hit right handed against big Will Smith our century link to what's next a converted starter now a left handed reliever yeah Smith uh, just getting recalled for the third time this season came up earlier made a start now uh, put into that bullpen also went down and they put him in the bullpen down in Omaha triple A. Brought in here to push Florimone over to his weaker side, and it's a much weaker side. Florimone from the right side of the plate, his natural side. Four hits, 42 at bats, an 095 average, but somehow six runs batted in. Well, let's add to that total right here. Bases loaded, one out. Smith with a fastball, big curveball changeup. There's oh, a fastball. Away ball one. Royals have three left handed relievers. We'll see them all likely in this four game series Bruce Chen, Smith, and Tim Collins. Slap foul, one and one. A double play ball killed the fourth inning rally after the Twins scored a couple. Side two and one. Loramone's drawn two walks from this side of the plate. Struck out ten times. And Tom Bernanski, Ron Gardenhire still maintain they feel he is a better hitter from the right side of the plate. He just hasn't had the opportunity because you don't see as many left-handed pitchers. Two and one. Another foul. 
Well, he's had a couple fastballs to hit right there. He just fouled him off. Now Smith again. He's got that big curveball. Both these clubs, the best bullpens in the American League. Twins a little bit better than the Royals as far as earned run average. Loramon trying to hit the ball to the outfield. Held it to the screen. Base is full of twins with one out. A high fly to left. Gordon's got a great arm. Plouffe runs well at third. And Gordon with a throw to third. Florimone gets the job done with a fly ball. Good job by Florimone right there. And thing about Alex Gordon, he knew he was too deep to try to throw that ball home, so he just threw it back into the infield. So Florimore picking up an RBI is 23rd of the year, and it's a three to one Twins lead. That's a great approach at the plate by Florimone, taking some pitches up and out over the plate, hitting a bunch of balls foul to the right side. He gets the pitch in, and he's able to turn on it. He wasn't out in front and does a great job of elevating that ball to get that RBI. They saw Rick Anderson going over to Duduno, kind of a long inning late in a ball game, and what they like to do is receive Burton up. Might be the uh, end for Duduno with Burton warming up. One strike. Thomas has held his own against left-handers, hitting 238 against them, but just 21 at bat. Five hits, a couple of doubles, and a home run. Two strikes. Smith with that biting slider gets the strikeout to end the inning. Twins add one more in the bottom of the seventh. Wolves took Trey Burke with that ninth pick out of Michigan. It looks like they are going to get the 14th and the 21st pick from the Utah Jazz. And pick number 21 just went. It was Gorgie Jang, who played for Louisville last year, hails from Africa, six foot eleven center. So along with Shabazz Muhammad, two pretty nice players for the Minnesota Timberwolves, will confirm that trade a little later this evening. Well, thank you, Kevin. Pedro Floramon driving uh, what the Twins. Uh would consider an awfully big run. It makes uh, the world a difference if you're an eighth inning pitcher or a ninth inning pitcher. Whether you've got a one run lead or a two run lead, now it's a two run lead. Uh, Jared Burton coming in, and he's been the eighth inning setup man for Glenn Perkins in these type of ball games, making his 35th relief appearance. He's worked 33 and a third innings, 32 hits allowed, 15 walks, four intentional with 31 strikeouts. 
want to thank Ron Comer for being up here for uh, the last few innings. We'll hear from Comer throughout this four game series. Gerard Dyson will lead things off for the Royals and Alex Gordon and LCD's Escobar. Seven very good innings for Samuel Duduno and he got into trouble and got out of it all by his lonesome in the seventh inning. Ball one. And that was important for Duduno because of the pitch count as you mentioned also for the other starters to see him work his way through. Don't look over your shoulder do it yourself. Good job by Duduno. One and zero to Dyson and now a strike. And important for the relievers too I would think it's a lot easier to come out of the bullpen to start an inning with the bases empty than it is to come in with the tying run at third. You're right on right there. <laughs> Now it wouldn't have been Burton asked to get the final out of the seventh inning. We saw Fien and uh, Fieldbar warming up two and one. Maybe the most efficient pitching staff the Twins had was about eight years ago. It seemed like Carlos Silva was good for six every night. No more. But six innings Santana was in there. But they always finished innings it seemed like there weren't mid inning pitching changes. Three and one. We do not want to walk this guy right here. He's outstanding as far as stealing bases on the base pass. Basically, here it is, hit it, and hopefully Dyson will hit it at somebody. Three and two. And you have to do it again. Burton hit a little bit of a slump and it really started that night in Kansas City back on June 6th. Came in and didn't have a real good outing. Then a couple of them uh, backed up after that. Had a groin issue. Blue's going to chase it and make the catch in foul ground. One down. Good job. Good job by Burton right there. Coming back on a 3 1 count. Getting Dyson to swing on a 3 2 pitch. Samuel Duduno here tonight. Outstanding. First hitter of the ball game. Alex Gordon got that infield base hit. Boy, did he settle down nicely. Gave up the home run to Perez. Worked out of that jam in the seventh inning. 87 pitches, 60 for strikes. Saw the fastball, the first one. There's the breaking ball, and look at the arm, how it extends out. Hmm. Gordon with a swing and a miss, one strike. Gordon one for three. That went right off the end of the bat. Between Duduno, Morno, and Dozier, he ended up getting an infield hit and got as far as third base in the first inning. So we're going to miss two strikes. That changeup, if a hitter sitting on a fastball, almost seems impossible to hit. You almost have to sit on the changeup if you're going to have any hope of hitting it hard. Remember last year when he first joined us, everybody's saying, "Boy, what a nice splitter he has!" You know, it's this, it's a circle changeup. There's a fastball on the outside corner. Two down. Mauer sitting away. Oh, right there. Bill Cousy saying that's strike three. Two gone. Escobar the batter. He was slumping a bit. Ned Yost moved him down to the bottom of the order. Now moving him back up to the. Number two spot where he wants to hit. He thinks he's a good number two hitter. Hopes to stay there for a while. Strike one. Foul back two strikes. Head in the count. Mauer saying fastball. Go up the ladder with him a little bit here. Center and Thomas will play it on a hop. Escobar keeps standing alive and gets Hosmer to the plate. 
I think uh, Joe wanted up a little bit more about uh, you know neck high rather than uh, letter high. Approaching the midway point of the 2013 baseball season, a good time to get a group together and head to the ballpark. Organize your business, church, school, or just some friends together. Make up a group. 833 Twins. Visit twinsbaseball.com. Check out the options. Learn about the benefits that group organizers receive from putting it all together. Again, we're expecting. Tremendous weather through this entire homestand. Kind of hot and humid today, and it's going only going to get better. Temperature is going to be more moderate. Humidity is more moderate. Yeah, keep an eye. There he goes. I was going to say keep an eye on it, but maybe we get the final out here as Escobar took off. Osmer hits a number in front of the plate and a good eighth inning for Jared Burton. Joe Mauer and company will try to start something in the bottom of the inning. Field. Be sure to stick around after the game for Twins Live presented by Century Link as we break down a pitcher's duel tonight at Target Field. Sam Deduno so far getting the better of the Royals and also we'll take a look at the best of Phantom Cam. If you've been watching our broadcast you've been seeing some incredible shots from this super slow-mo camera and we will show you the highlights from the game on that tonight. And of course we'll hear from Ron Gardenhire and get his thoughts after the game. Dick and Bert. All right, thank you, Jamie. Joe Maurer tried to bunt it up the third baseline with Mustakas playing deep and well off the line. One strike to Maurer, hitless in the ball game. Could not hit the ball any harder than he did in the first inning, and he nearly decapitated Jeremy Guthrie. Zero oh and two. I think Joe, since Joe has worn a twins uniform, we've only seen him try to do that maybe a handful of times. Right. And, uh, you know, he's been successful doing that. You're going to shift over like they are. Plenty of room down that third baseline to lay one down. Uh, two hopper back to Smith. And Maurer retired one down. Let's get caught up on the proceedings here tonight. Well, Samuel Deduno, seven very good innings, five hits allowed, only one walk, three strikeouts, the biggest strikeout coming in the seventh inning when he was able to strike out David Lowe with runners at first and third and one out. Offensively, the big fourth inning, the RBI double by Justin Morneau, then followed by an RBI single by Arcia. For the two runs for the Twins, they added another run in the seventh, an unearned run. I was charged to Jeremy Guthrie. Willingham at the plate, singled and scored in the fourth, walked and was thrown out at the plate trying to score on Morno's double in the sixth. One and one. Taken 
for ball two. Well, Will Smith, just 23 years old, he came over from the Angel organization a couple of years ago for the Alberto Cayaspo trade back in 2010. Straight over the top, six foot five lefty. Two and one to Willingham. Three and one, Morno on deck. Full count. Those are Glenn's. Perkins warming up for what looks to be a, an opportunity for his 20th save. A high fly to left center field. Dyson calling for it. Out number two. You want to say it again? Bert? You just missed it. <laughs> Updated look at our AT&T Twitter poll. Will Joe DiMaggio's 56 game hit streak ever be broken? Most of you say no. I would <laughs> tend to agree. I can't believe 57 percent. That seems low. Morno with a pair of doubles on a lineout. Got a pitch up, fouled it to the screen. Three at bats for Morno, and more tonight probably than any time recently. He's hit the ball where it's pitched. I remember when George Brett was uh, up in the high 30s. What were, I don't recall where he ended it, but. The mass media attention he got, he said, was overwhelming. Oh, and that's when Joe DiMaggio, when he did the 56 game consecutive, I was kind of, I mean, back then, it was kind of unnoticed, you know? Ho, ho, hum. But now, today, my goodness, everybody gets 40. And I mean, Paul Molitor went through that too. He went. Morno's gone on three pitches, and Perez has to flip the first to end the inning. A one, two, three, bottom of the eighth. Stay tuned for the Gander Mountain weekend weather update for Twins territory.
how important has Glenn Perkins been to the Twins? They're trying to get his uh, their 35th win of the year. It would be Perkins' 20th save of the year. And we just showed you a bunch of strikeouts, and that's what Perkins all about. 40 strikeouts in 28 and two thirds innings. Only 17 hits allowed. First pitch up high, ball one. No fooling around. Fastball, hard slider. Middle Here it the, comes. Middle of the lineup for the Royals. Butler, Perez, Mustakas. They have combined this year for only 12 home runs. Off the outside corner, 2 0. Butler singled in the seventh inning, got as far as third base. Lined out to center in the first with Gordon at third and two away. Officially one for three. Missing again, 3 0. And a base runner, of course, brings the tying run to the plate. Control not an issue for Perkins. One of his strengths as a closer. Six walks, 28 and two thirds innings. Opponent batting average of 170. All the numbers very, very good for Glenn Perkins. Foul back three and two. And with that two run lead, you don't want to lead off that inning with the walk. So we'll see if Perk goes right after him again with a fastball. <laughs> Left it up high and a lead off walk in the night. Seven walks now for Perkins, and he'll have to face Perez representing the tying run. Jeff Francoeur coming off the bench, and he's going to run for the designated hitter. So Butler out of the ball game. And Perez will hit a home run for the only Kansas City run leading off the fifth. Added a single in the seventh. Well, Frank Coor, not a stay a base stealing threat, but he can get the first and third on a base hit where Butler may stop at second. That's why he's pinch running for Butler there. Strike over the inside corner. Gave up a two out single. Royals had the tying run on the plate in Eric Hosmer, but then Hosmer hit a comebacker to the mound, and the inning was ended. Scalded it to Plouffe. Man, did he hit that ball hard. One away. Well, that breaking ball went right into a swing, and Trevor Plouffe went to his right, made a nice play. Ball hit so hard it could tear the webbing out of your glove. How quick that ball got the flu. Put Phantom Cam on it and it still got out there in a hurry. One down. Mustakas the batter. The bell to strike. The stock is really struggling against left handers, hitting just 151 against them. Eight hits, 53 at bats, a couple of doubles, and a home run. On the outside corner. And when you struggle against left handers, guess what the count is? 0 and 2. There's the splits. Not exactly ripping the cover off the ball against right handers. No. But 0 and 2. Perkins to Mustakas. Perkins a little agitated with that leadoff walk. Got the fastball up to 97. 
Lorenzo Kane in the on deck circle looks like he's going to hit for David Lowe. One and two. Foul tip. Mauer hangs on. Two down. And another strikeout for Glenn Perkins. That'll bring up Lorenzo Kane. It's only been five outings for Glenn Perkins. This is his 30th that he has gone, you know, at least one inning. That's his longest outing where he's had at least a strikeout. Only five times he did not have a strikeout in an inning. Royals. Are carrying five outfielders, the three who started today, and then Kane and Frank Coor, who's pinch running at first. Frank Coor's playing time has really been crimped. And there's some thought that eventually the Royals may uh, release him. Up and away, ball one. Kane was playing center field until Dyson came back, and now Kane on the bench. One and out. Good breaking ball there. It's an extra base hit and advances the tying run into scoring position. Well, it looked like he kind of tommyhawked that ball down the right field line. Right, just inside out swing. He throws so hard. Perkins does it. That ball hit right down that right field line. Harmley has to go get it in the corner, play a little bit of a carom, get it back in. Now former American League MVP Miguel Tejada who made the Royals on a minor league contract as a utility player but he's on the roster and he's going to hit as a pinch hitter with the tying run at second and two down. Tejada as a pinch hitter two hits and eight at bats. 69 at bats on the season. 19 hits a couple home runs he's driven in nine. The pinch hit by Kane, an odd one for the Royals. They're now five for 37 as a pinch hitting team. And now Tejada with another pinch hitting appearance with the lead on the line and two out. Down the middle of strike. Pretty good numbers as a pinch hitter in his career, 16 seasons. 16 seasons, 20 at bats off the bench. Up high, including the eight this year. In the hopes of getting a ground ball to end the game, Kane's got a huge lead at second base. Well, good crowd here tonight on their feet. Twins looking for their second win against the Royals in seven meetings so far. One and two to Miguel Tejada. Two and two.
Grounded to Plouffe. Sets. Fires. And Perkins gets his 20th save of the year. Not the prettiest save, but Glenn Perkins will take that save right there. Good play by Trevor Plouffe. Backpedaling to get that throw over to Justin Morneau. Good job all around. Good defense, good timely hitting, and a great pitching performance by Samuel Duduno. Royals can't figure him out. And Tom Hanneman, the Twins with a win here, are now in their hopes of catching and passing the Royals in this series. They are even with the Royals in the loss column. Dick, the Twins enjoy some good old-fashioned home cooking tonight, and it tasted very, very good. Up next on Twins Live, we'll talk about the pitcher's duel here this evening, the best of Phantom Cam, and we'll hear from Guardy. Up next on Twins Live.